And I um, would like, though, to hear from your point of view what you think your problems are, why you wanted to come to therapy. And I'm actually just sort of interested in how you ended up at our clinic of all places. Well, um, do you, yeah, Dr. Johnson, do you know him? No? Um, is he in the community? Yeah, that's my psychiatrist. Okay. No, I, I mean, I've seen so. him twice, mm -hmm. but um, he, um, I started with him to uh, see if there wasn't something to do for the, my depression. Mm -hmm. And then um, in the midst of that, then he said, listen, you meet criteria for borderline personality disorder, and you should see this program. Mm -hmm. And I'm not willing to see you unless you have a therapist, given how suicidal you've been. Mm -hmm. So that's how I'm here. Okay. So you got referred by Dr. Johnson. Johnson. Okay. Listen, do you mind if I take notes? Because I have a okay. bad memory. I'm worried I'll forget things. Okay. Sure. So what's his first name? I don't know. You don't know? Okay. And uh, so he uh, referred you here. You came here. Uh, and then you met with Angela. And so uh, does that mean that you came, you saw him as a psychiatrist for the depression, and my understanding is that you also had a psychotherapist at the time, so do you still no. not have that psychotherapist? Uh -uh. Okay. Who, who is that psychotherapist? Who is um, it that you were just seeing? Uh, his name is Richard Fields. Richard Fields, mm -hmm. okay. But you're not still seeing him? No, uh-uh. I think okay. he's got a restraining order. He did? Okay. When did that happen? Mm, probably three weeks ago. Okay. So three weeks ago you were seeing him, <coughs> then you got a restraining order. Was that... I don't know if he got a restraining order. That's okay. what he was threatening when okay. at all. Yeah. Okay. Does that mean he also terminated therapy with you, or did you terminate with him? Uh, I think we both terminated. All right. Yeah. Okay. So, all right. So why don't you tell me... Um, what you're hoping to get from therapy. What I'd like to do is just spend some time with me getting to know you and give you a chance to get to know me. And so we can decide whether, um, you know, I think I can help you with your problems and whether you think I'm the person that can help you. So that's the main thing we need to do today. So why don't you tell me what you're looking for in therapy? You know, I, you know at this point I don't really know. Mm -hmm. I've had a lot of therapy and um, I've been in a lot of different psychiatric hospitals, and mm -hmm. not a lot has helped. Mm -hmm. So, um, I mean, the psychiatrist said, try this. I'm willing to try it. Mm -hmm. uh, my daughter actually got online. I didn't know what borderline personality mm -hmm. disorder was. My daughter got online and was looking for it, and she says, you are. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. and she said, actually, that, um, you know, whatever, I can try I mean, I'm open to trying something. I just don't have a lot of hope that's going to do anything. Okay. Because I've had a lot of therapy. Okay. Well, that's really important, though, <coughs> from my point of view, that you're trying or you're willing to try therapy again because it sounds like you've had a lot of therapy. That's, that's, that's a really good sign that you're still willing to try therapy. But tell me, I'd like to get just a sort of understanding of, from your point of view, what are the things that are causing trouble in your life that you want help with? If you could just give me a little history, it sounds like maybe a lot of things are going on. Um, what do I, I would the thing I would like most help with is that I want to feel like I want to kill myself all the time. Mm -hmm. So that's what I want the most help with. Okay. So let's talk about that some because my understanding from Angela is that you've actually tried to kill yourself. Mm -hmm. Okay. And um, actually more than once. Okay. Um, when you did try to kill yourself, were you, um, were you trying to kill yourself or were you trying to harm yourself? Were you hoping you would end up dead? Yeah. Okay. I mean, most, most of the times I've done it, that's been the case. All right. And so now you're feeling <laughs> suicidal again? I'm, like, constantly suicidal. I mean, sometimes it gets worse. Like, I think about being dead all the time, pretty mm -hmm. much. Mm-hmm. All right. So one of the things you and I have to work on then is talking about how suicidal you are right now. And it sounds to me like you're afraid somehow that you might kill yourself. Is that part of what's going on? That you I'm not afraid I'm going to kill myself. I will kill myself if things get too bad. Mm -hmm. I mean, the way that the psychiatrist said it is, look, if you're going to be dead anyway, why not try this? 
I you realize, I though, if you were dead, the therapy's not going to work. I mean, it is a critical thing for you and I to be clear on, is that if you end up dead, this won't work. So I'm glad you brought it up, because it's important. And I want to talk about that. And so we need, that's one thing we need to talk about, is how suicidal you're feeling. Can you tell me why you're so suicidal? I mean, is there something, what's going on in your life that would make you that's so suicidal? Been, so, I mean, like, for instance, I was a teenager. Mm -hmm. So, is that, I mean, what do you mean? What makes me, you mean what makes it worse? Well, the or, thing I'm going to say to you is that being suicidal, you know, suicidal behavior itself, <coughs> mm -hmm. although you're presenting it as a problem, which I think is really great, mm -hmm. that you're saying, I don't want, you know, I'm feeling suicidal and I want help with that, but suicidal behavior is almost always a solution. And so part of what you and I need to do is, I, I need to evaluate today just how suicidal you are, so I'm putting mm -hmm. that on the shelf for two seconds here. Mm -hmm. But what I want to find out is most people, if they're suicidal, something's going wrong. And it's a solution. It's like you're, there's something that you can't tolerate in your life. It's too painful to deal with. That's what it feels And like. suicidal behavior is generally a solution. It's something too painful. And my job as a therapist will be, frankly, to try to help us figure out what is too painful and what can I help you do to make it less painful, to make life livable. And so what I'm hearing is that you are very suicidal, and I'm going to get back to that in a moment, but I'd first like to hear... From your point of view, why are you so suicidal? What's the problem that's making you want to kill yourself? From your point of view. It just feels simplistic. I mean, I mean I'm depressed almost mm -hmm. all the time mm -hmm. to the point where I stay in bed. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So part of it's just the major depression that you haven't It's not just. I mean, have you ever had depression? I'm talking about where you just nothing, I mean, where you're just, um, you know, nothing matters. Mm -hmm. You know, it's all you can do to brush your teeth, you mm -hmm. know. I'm talking mm -hmm. about that kind of okay. depression. Have there been times though in your life when you weren't depressed? You know, if you had a depression that goes in and out, you know, up and down, like most depressions kind of come in and go and they get a lot worse and better when you're, mm. has yours, when you're not depressed, do you feel so suicidal? Or is it, you feel suicidal remember. all the time? I mean, for as long as, I mean, it's been, this has been pretty constant, I'd say, for the last hmm, probably five years or something. But I've had depression since I was like a kid. Okay. So. So tell me about the depression. What did that, what, what, what about the depression? You said one that you're, um, not being able to get out of bed? Yeah, like I feel no energy mm -hmm. at all to do anything. Okay. And, um, I mean, I'm not sleeping. Okay. And you're feeling um, suicidal. Mm -hmm. Okay. Has there been a treatment for the depression? I mean, are you, are, I guess what I'm trying to ask is if you, if you thought that I could treat the depression, do you think that would make you less suicidal? Do you think that the depression is the main problem? That if I somehow could really help you with the depression and we could get a, get a handle on it and had a treatment that would work, that you would then be less suicidal? I'm trying to figure out, have there been times when you weren't so depressed but you still wanted to kill yourself? That's not the whole problem. Or is it oh, really? I see what you mean. No, um, I don't know. Okay. I mean... When you say, have you, can you remember times where you weren't depressed, I'm like, what are you talking about? Okay. I don't remember All right. that. Okay. So one of the things we need to work on, besides everything else in your life, is seeing if we can figure out an effective treatment for depression. Yeah. I mean, I think, I mean, I don't know if the medication will help once I start it, really, but... Okay. And you <laughs> went to see Johnson and... And the reason you wanted to see him was to get some treatment for the depression. Yeah. Okay. And did he give you a prescription of something for it? Are you? He did. Yeah. He did. What was it? I don't. Know. I haven't filled it yet. All right. But you don't know what it is either. I don't really. I mean, he explained it, but what? I didn't. What? I haven't. I don't know what it is. Okay. Now that's going to be important for me to find out what it is. Okay. Okay. Uh, my understanding is that you. The last time you made a suicide attempt, it was on Tegretol. And so did he, by chance, give you a, a 
prescription for Tegretol? Um, no, he didn't give me a prescription for Tegretol. Okay. But That's I do good. still have some. Okay. You've got Tegretol? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to get back to that in a moment. But first I want to hear more about... <clears throat> um, I want to hear more, not so much more about the depression, but more about other things going on in your life that you'd like help with. One main thing is suicidality. The other is depression and trying to work on that, which you're not feeling terribly hopeful about since no one else has been able to help you that much with depression. Okay. But you're feeling hopeful enough to come to therapy. That's a good sign. So tell me what else is going on in your life that's causing problems that you would like help with. I think um, I mean, one thing that's really hard right now is my daughter's living with me. Okay. And we fight, like, all the time. Mm -hmm. And so that's, um, I mean, that makes it a lot worse. And I see her doing, you know, just almost exactly what I was doing. And I don't want her to have this kind of life. Mm -hmm. um, so who are you living with right now? She's, um, I moved in with this guy. Um, I guess it's two months ago, and then she is pregnant, and she, um, the place where she was staying with some friends didn't work out, and so she's been staying with me lately, and then the real problem is that now her boyfriend is staying, you know, is with her, you know, kind of constantly, so it's almost like he's living there too, and oh. that, I really, I mean, I don't like him at all. So, um, you don't like your daughter's boyfriend? Mm -mm. Okay. And so, so you're living. Remind me again who you're living with. You're, who's this, the man you're living with? His name's Bob, but just um, this guy. I mean, I. It's hard to start therapy with you and then like tell you all this. Uh, you know, just start out with just kind of what I'm fucked up mess my life is. Mm -hmm. It is hard. And part of the part of the goal of this session actually is going to be to see how comfortable you feel you're going to be with me, whether I seem to be the right therapist for you. And I know it's really hard to talk about your life and and the problems in it. The good news is though if you can tell me at least enough for me to get some handle on what the problems are, I'll be able to think with you about possible solutions. But if you can't tell me, it's going to be hard for me to figure things out. But major depression is one thing that we're going to work on. I'm figuring other things are probably going on. And so what I've got now is that you're living with Bob, your daughter, your daughter's pre How old's your daughter? She's 18. Okay. Are you close to her? I mean, cl we are close, but we just, we fight a lot. Uh -huh. I mean, to the point where it's, I mean, times where it's gotten, you know, it's gotten violent. Okay. And the boyfriend <laughs> you don't like? No. Okay. And how about the guy you're living with? Do you like him? You all get along? Yeah. I mean, I've known him two months. Oh. All right. So. Now, listen, you know what I didn't get from Angela was whether you're working. Do you have a job? Are you working? I do. Uh, I'm doing some cleaning and stuff like that, uh, kind of under the table stuff. Okay. So why do you think they sent you to this program? I mean... The... Um, the way that uh, Johnson was explaining is that you, um, is that sort of how I get, I have a lot of problems with anger mm -hmm. also. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I do lose my temper a lot mm -hmm. and that's part of the thing. And mm -hmm. um, so he just was saying that some of this, the being suicidal and then um, cutting myself and stuff like that, that that's, um, that you might be able to help with that. I don't, I don't know if I'm answering your question. Right. Okay. Do you want help with anger? 
All other things being equal, if I could help you. I want to get along better with my daughter, and I don't want to screw up her life more. Okay. So if I could help you with anger and with your relationship with your daughter, that would be a good thing from your point of view and be something you'd like help with. Okay. And so, um, and the other thing you want help with is suicidality, and I want to help you with that. What I heard about also is that you are self-mutilating, you're cutting yourself, or you have cut yourself. Is that so? I have on? cut myself. You I have don't mutilate myself. You don't. I mean, okay. it's not like I'm trying to scar myself or uh -huh. something like that. All right. So what do you cut yourself with? Um, you know, box knife or exacto knife or whatever is around. All right. How often do you do that? Uh, maybe, you know, a couple times a month or something. <clears throat> and do you have to get stitches? How serious is this? Sometimes. Mm -hmm. Where do you cut yourself? Arms, mostly. Okay. I mean, I wear long sleeves, so it's not so obvious, but... Okay. Would you like some help stopping that? Not, I mean, it helps, so mm -hmm. not particularly. Okay. We're going to get back to that. Mm -hmm. Okay. So depression, getting along better with your daughter, getting some handle of your anger, trying to do something about at least the suicidality. Now, how about the fact that um, you seem like you're um, having a problem with alcohol? Is that true from your point of view? I, don't, I didn't talk to Angela about having a problem with alcohol. You did? No. I don't think it's... And what I got from Angela is that you actually are drinking quite a bit, though, each week. I don't think I... What's quite a bit from your or her perspective? That's not what I told her. Okay. And so I drink quite a bit and... I mean, I have, I drink beer, mm -hmm. you know. She said a couple times a week, three or four times a week, five or six drinks. Yeah. Okay. And you, that, that, you, from your point of view, it's not a problem. I don't drive. I've not, I've never, it doesn't do anything to me. Mm -hmm. Any chance that, uh, do you get more suicidal when you drink? I just feel like you're like going like bang, 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 asking me a bunch of questions mm -hmm. uh, and assuming the worst. Mm -hmm. I mean, just the way you just put that. Mm-hmm. When did you start feeling that? Was it when I started talking about the alcohol or before? No, you're just like going from thing to thing, and it's more like, um, and you talk to some team mm -hmm. about me in advance, and it just is feeling weird, like you were walking in and you have all this history about me, and then you're just going like all through the stuff that I've done. and. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it is hard, and I am sort of going from thing to thing. And the reason I'm doing it is I'm in my own mind trying to get sort of a handle on what the major problems are. And to me, what I want to do today is to just try to get a handle on them so that I can figure out whether I think I can be helpful to you. And, what I'm tr and it, it sounds like the problems themselves are sort of confusing, complex, and big. Is that, do they feel that way to you? Confusing, complex, big? I just know I don't, I don't feel like, um, I just don't want things to keep going like this. I mean, I'd rather be dead than keep going like this. Okay. I just feel tired. Mm-hmm. Well, let's get back to talking about suicidal behavior again, because that sounds like it's a major thing. It's that, but what I'm reading from listening to you is that what's happening is each time you sort of focus in on your life problems, then what's happening is it feels overwhelming and you start feeling suicidal and like you can't do it. Is that true or not? Do you think that's accurate? I mean, I feel it. Con I'm not... I don't... Uh I'm not following your question. Okay. I'm not trying to be difficult. I'm just trying to understand where, where you're coming from. Okay. <clears throat> well, I'm not thinking you're difficult. Where I'm coming from is trying to figure out what's going on. 
Does that make sense to you? Okay. Because for me to help you, I sort of have to figure out what's happening. No, I understand that. Okay. So is, are you feeling, I'm wondering if part of what's going on is that you're just feeling terrible about telling me all these things in your life. Just, I'm starting therapy with you where you've got, it sounds like to me from Angela, everything that has ever gone wrong in my life. Uh-huh. And so are you feeling like I've got everything gone wrong and none of the positives? And all were, yeah, sort of. Mm-hmm. Well, I think that's a good point on your part because I, I do have to have all the things going wrong because that's what you're here for, is for me to help you with that. And I'm going to want to know your strengths because that's what's going to get us through this. The thing that's going to get us from your problems to a solution is hopefully my skill and your strength. So we're going to have to have both of those. Now, I feel, to be perfectly honest with you, I've already heard about your strengths because to me, anybody who can go through all these therapists and still be in here fighting, coming in, and you certainly seem like you want help, you're willing to give it another try. You seem totally exhausted, like this is going to be hell for you. But the very fact that you have the strength to come in, to me, is a huge strength. Don't you think so? Or stupid. Yeah. But it takes a lot of courage to try. So you've got strength and courage. Now, with those two things going for you and me having skill, I'm figuring we can probably get somewhere. And so I want what I, but I, but I can't get anywhere um, if we're not pretty sure about the suicidality. And you're saying that you feel right now quite suicidal, right? And you've got Tegretol. Yeah. Okay. So let's talk about how suicidal you are. You wanted to do that? Okay. Right now, are you, are you thinking that if this session doesn't go well, you might kill yourself? I mean, are we at risk for you killing yourself now? Are you planning on, are you, how, how suicidal would you say you are now? I mean, sort of what are you thinking about right now when it comes to suicidality? I can tell you that if this doesn't work, then I'm going to kill myself. Okay. If therapy doesn't work or if this session doesn't work? I'm not living like this. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to lie to you about it. Mm -hmm. Okay. I think you've been really clear about that, that you can't live this life. My question is, do I have to worry? Because I don't think, I mean, just to be perfectly frank with you, we're not going to change your life today. The one thing that we can do today is get a really good handle on whether I think I can help you and you think I can help you. And we do. That's what we can get today. And what I need to know is, is what do you need today? I'm, I'm trying to figure out how suicidal you are in the sense of you're saying you can't keep living like this. I accept that. However, I can't get you not living like this today. So I need to be sure that you're going to give me some amount of time. So my question is, are you going to give me some time? I don't know, even know what this program is. Mm -hmm. You know? You want me to tell you what the program is? Okay. The program is developed for people who meet criteria for borderline personality disorder. That's the good news because if you meet criteria for it, then this program is designed for you. So that's really good news. What is that exactly? That's the other part that. I mean, yeah, because my daughter was like, God, this is so you. Uh huh. So in other words, your daughter uh, uh, presented it like it was sort of a bad thing, like negative, like this was not 
one of your better set of qualities, <laughs> meeting criteria for borderline personality disorder. All right. So you want me to tell you what it is? Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to tell you what it is, and you think about yourself, and you tell me as we go. Okay. Okay. So people who meet criteria tend to have problems in a number of areas, and you can sort of think about it as in five major areas. Okay. So the first area is people who meet criteria for borderline tend to be really the emotionally vulnerable people of the world. In other words, they're highly emotional. They go up and down a lot, might have a lot of problems with anger, which you already told me you did, and um, are, live life at really vulnerable, tend to have a lot of trouble regulating emotions. So if you get really depressed, you can't get out of it. If you get really anxious, you can't come down. Mm. Um, or you might just go up and down like this and wonder what happened. How did I get like that? You think that's true of you? I mean, I am intense. All right. Yeah. The second set of criteria have to do with interpersonal relationships. And so people who meet criteria for borderline personality disorder usually have trouble with a lot of their relationships. They may be chaotic. They may go up and down. You may really care about people, but um, not be able to maintain the relationships. Often people who meet criteria for borderline personality disorder really want uh, attachment, close relationships, and want it so bad that when someone starts to leave, you feel like you can't live without them, like you can't tolerate it, like you're going to fall apart if you get left alone. Mm -hmm. But on the other hand, when you do have the relationship, then you can't keep them going. So they feel chaotic or arguments, fights, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. Either with close people or sometimes just across the board. What do you think? think? Yeah, I mean, that one for sure and for sure with therapists. Okay. The so your long okay. seat's not been getting along with therapists. I wouldn't put it like that. All right. What do you mean you wouldn't put it like that? I mean, I wouldn't put it, my long suit is that I don't get along with therapists. Okay. What I'm saying is that you, 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 um, okay, let's move on. Um, what I really meant to say was you've had trouble getting along with therapists. I wouldn't even put it like that. I'd oh, say yeah. that, no, I'd say that the, I mean, the last one I had, the whole problem was that he, um, I was trying to explain some of the stuff that's been going on with my daughter, uh -huh. and he starts saying stuff like, that just was so simple, and it made it really clear he did not have kids. Uh -huh. I'm like, well, so do you have a daughter? Uh -huh. I mean, do you, have you had kids? Uh -huh. Do you know what I'm talking about? Uh -huh. And he's like, no. Uh -huh. uh, I don't want to talk about that with you. Uh -huh. you know, this is, I'm private. This is private information, and I'm not telling you if, uh -huh. if I have kids or not. I said, well, if you don't know that, I mean, if I can't know whether or not you have kids, how am I supposed to take your advice? Uh -huh. You're coming across somebody who doesn't have any experience with this. Right. So I wouldn't say that that's me not getting along with my therapist. I think that's him not dealing very well with conflict. All right. So therapist, okay. But how about, but in other areas of your life, there's been conflict, a lot of conflict? Yeah. Okay. So one of the things people who meet criteria for borderline tend to have is a lot of conflict. Sometimes it's caused by others, sometimes it's caused by you, but the, one of the things therapists do with people who meet criteria for borderline is actually help you figure out how to get along better. But let's keep going what it is, because we're going to see if you meet criteria. Okay. Mm -hmm. So the first emotion, vulnerability, or sensitivity, reactivity, up and down not being able to get yourself uh, out of particular moods. The other is having lots of trouble interpersonally, especially with relationships that are really important to you. Okay. The third criteria is um, kind of having trouble regulating your behavior, getting your actions to go with what you want your actions to be. So people who meet criteria often are impulsive, either drive fast, use a lot of drugs, maybe have eating disorder, Sort of like where you regulate emotions with behavior as opposed to regulate them in some other way. And so also people who meet criteria for borderline often have a lot of self-cutting or taking overdoses or trying to kill themselves. So that seems pretty true of you, that you, both, you have lots of trouble with suicidal behavior, mm -hmm. suicidal urges, 
and wanting to kill yourself and that you've actually attempted and you've been cutting yourself. Do you think the cutting uh, that you do is sort of regulating how you feel, making you feel better? That Are you a person who yeah, feels better if you feels, cut? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, you know, to be honest, I'm having a really hard time following you. You are? When you're, yeah. Okay. Could you just tell me about the program? Maybe okay. we could just start there. All right. Because I just... Um, yeah, I just have to be honest. This is I'm not feeling much of a connection. With me? Okay. Yeah, and I'm willing to give this a try, but... <clears throat> I mean, nothing against you or anything. It's just... I don't want to waste my time. Okay. Okay. Um, the program is individual psychotherapy that'd be with me. And that would be weekly. Uh, generally, we have hour sessions, sometimes longer. Sometimes I might have more than one session a week, but ordinarily it'd be one session a week. Then there'd be a group therapy. The group therapy is not really uh, like... Have you ever been in group therapy? I've had one or two things. Okay. Yeah. It's probably very different than what you've done. Because it's a uh, skills training. It's sort of like where you come in and learn skills. The basic idea in skills training is that part of the problems uh, that you're pr probably having is that you simply don't have the skills to lead your life in the ways you want to. That if you could learn some skills, like emotion regulation skills, like if you could actually learn how to regulate your emotions, <clears throat> if you could learn um, some interpersonal skills, which might be really helpful with the relationships that you're having, mm -hmm. and that you might need to learn some uh, skills in how to tolerate distress, sort of how to get through really difficult situations that you can't change, but you've got to get through without making them worse. Mm -hmm. So those are the three main types of skills. Then mm -hmm. there's another skill called mindfulness. And the mindfulness skills are sort of learning how to live in the moment, see the mo be in the moment, and see the moment for what it is. The idea being that if you can't see the moment for what it is, it is very difficult to deal with the moment. So those are the skills, and that's once a week. Generally, small groups, two skills trainers. And it's really a little bit like going to class. I mean, they give you books, and you look at your books, and you try to learn the skills. So you meet with me once a week. And then the um, other part of the treatment is that you get coaching from me. Mm -hmm. and the coaching be by telephone. Now, have you ever had a therapist you could call on the phone? I have called my therapist in the past, yeah. Okay. So I would want you to call me uh, for coaching. And generally, at the beginning of therapy, you and I might talk on the phone more often, but the idea would be that you would call me. So that's that. And then the other part of the therapy that's actually important, remember you brought up earlier how is it that I talk to a team. And the way we do our treatment is like a team treatment. And the team's job is to help me be a better therapist. And so the team is sort of monitoring me, making sure I do a good job. So the kind of good news there is that you've got a team. I'm trying to help you, and then we've got a team trying to help me. And the team also, the group, the group therapists, the people who are doing the skills would be on the team. Mm -hmm. So that's the treatment. It's all these things put together. So I have to go, I'd have to go here and I'd have to go to skills group. Yeah, the skills group being uh, once a week, but the skills group's here too. So you okay, would come so here. Okay, so it's at this clinic. It's, yeah, okay. it's at this clinic. So okay. you come to see me how once long, a week. How, how long is that? You mean how long does the skills group last yeah. or how long is therapy? Uh, the, how long does it last? Like how, if I come, when is it? Okay, I don't know if the I skills can... group's on Thursday nights. Okay. Starts at 530 and they go for two and a half hours, and they have a break in the middle. Okay. okay. So that's skills training. And you come to that once a week. Come see me once a week. How's that sound to you? Um, you know, I just, I don't know you. Mm -hmm. And the thing you have to know about me is that, like, I'm honest and... Uh, 
I'll do it because I need to get some medication for depression. Okay. So you're willing to come into the program, and the primary reason is is because they're not going to give you treatment. treatment He's not going to give me anything unless I'm in some sort of treatment. Okay, unless you're in treatment. All right. Okay. Listen, that's fine. That's that's as good as Reese is sending to come. And I'm glad to hear you're going to come, and I'm glad to see you're willing to do it. Is that true? Is that what you're saying? That you're actually willing to give this a try? I don't really feel like I have an option at this point, okay. to be honest. All right. It's reasonable. That's good news. Now, the other thing that you and I have to talk about that's going to be critical for you coming is that we've got to figure out a way to make sure that you live through the treatment so that at the end of treatment, when you have a life worth living, you're around it, experience your life worth living. So that's my biggest concern because my concern is that you're feeling suicidal and my concern is that you're cutting yourself. So what I want to talk about is what the goals of treatment would be. Because although you're coming to individual and you're coming to skills, you and I might be talking on the phone, we've got to get straight on what the goals would be. Now, your goal, my understanding of your goal is to feel better. You want to get your depression down. Yes. Okay. And so what I need to know is, can we add a goal that would be to stay alive and to learn how to cope with your emotions in some way other than cutting yourself? I mean, yeah, we can. I don't know exactly what you're talking about. Okay. Well, the first goal would be... I mean, I just feel like you're kind of lecturing me. You do? (laughs) Yeah, to be honest. (laughs) What am I doing? It's making you feel that way. You just, like, you first you, like, grill me, like, is this the case, is this the case, and now you're lecturing me. You do? You think so? (laughs) I don't want to be lecturing you. You know, I'm sorry. Just just how I'm feeling, to be honest. So you're feeling... You're sort of feeling like I'm putting. Yeah, like this. we're putting, we're starting a business agreement or something. Mm-hmm. You got a little piece of paper there. You want me to sign? Nope. I don't. You want to ask me some questions? I want to know how you're going to help me. That's what I want to know. Okay. 